Hello everyone. In today's video I'll be covering the third of my humidity videos, how to control humidity in tortoise enclosures. I've split this video into two, so this video, which is part one, covers increasing humidity and part two will cover how to decrease humidity. I'll leave a link in the description for my other humidity videos listed on this slide. And if you haven't already seen the first two videos, then it's worth checking these out as it gives an overview of the benefits, risks, etc. And it's a good starting point. So in this video, I'll be covering ways to increase humidity in both your indoor and your outdoor tortoise enclosures. Before we jump into the video, I'll introduce little Oscar and he'll be helping me out with this video. He was recently donated to me and he's currently in quarantine away from my other tortoises so that I can monitor his health. He's a very friendly little chap, so you'll probably see him whiz past us at some point. To start, we'll cover a few different options that you can try to help increase humidity in your indoor tortoise enclosures so that the humidity levels are within the recommended ranges for your particular species of tortoise that you have. One option would be to have a deep substrate. Our tortoise tables tend to be on the warm side, especially directly under the intense basking and heat lamps that we use. This overhead heat will dry out the soil, starting from the top of the soil and then working its way down to the bottom layers of the soil. If you have a nice deep substrate, it will not only hold moisture for longer, but will offer a more humid microclimate for your tortoise. You can see the top layer has been dried out by the heat from the lamps, but if I scrape away the top layer of soil, you should reach the damper, more humid substrate. And this is exactly what your tortoise does, is burrow down into the substrate to reach the more humid layers if your tortoise needs to find more humidity. Although having a deeper substrate doesn't specifically increase the humidity above the soil in the tortoise table itself, it does however offer increased humidity below the surface of the soil, which is accessible to the tortoise. Another option to increase humidity is to lightly spray the substrate using a water mister. As an example, in some of my smaller enclosures, I find that spraying the soil once a day for around five to 10 seconds works well for most of the year. Depending on where you live and your climate, you may need to adjust how often you spray the soil. Another way to increase humidity in your tortoise enclosure is by using a humidifier. The benefit of these is that they can be programmed to come on at different times of the day for a specific time or duration. The negative is that they cost a lot more than the regular misters, but they're handy if you want to automate the misting in your enclosure. If you live in a drier climate with low humidity, or you have a species of tortoise like the forest species that require higher humidity, or you don't want the hassle of regularly misting the substrate, then this option could work well for you. I personally don't use these in any of my setups, so I can't recommend a particular brand, but feel free to let others know in the comments section if there is one that you use and you find works really well. By adding live plants that are safe for tortoises to the enclosure and keeping the plants well watered and well misted will help raise humidity in that area, as well as looking great and providing shelter or places for your tortoise to hide. A word of warning though, any plants purchased from garden centres or florists will most likely contain fertilisers or chemicals that are harmful to tortoises, so these are best avoided. Or only use them once they've had the second growth of leaves and flowers and all the harmful chemicals have been washed away outside. Alternatively, you can place your plants in sturdy plant pots that won't get knocked over by your tortoise or grow your own tortoise safe plants from seed in unfertilised soil and then transfer to your enclosure when they're ready. Creating a humid area. There's a couple of options for this. You can use a hide like these wooden half logs, a plant pot on its side, an upturned ice cream tub with a door cut into it, or you can use the sleeping area or the enclosed area that some tortoise tables come with. And then you simply put a handful of damp sphagnum moss inside the hide and this will create a humid area. The moss will need to be rehydrated and this is normally done once a day depending on how quickly the moss dries out. These humid hides work best when they're placed in the hotter end of the enclosure, for example near the basking lamp. 
If you only have a tortoise table with a fixed sleeping area, then you may want to have another hide so it's positioned closer to the heat source with the damp sphagnum moss inside it. You can take this one step further by creating a larger humid area for your tortoise to wander in and out of. My radiated tortoises can access this humid area here by the tunnel. As you may be able to spot, the soil is damper in this area and I have sphagnum moss, leaves and a saucer of water and also there's heat from the basking lamp during the day and heat from a CHE bulb overnight that will keep the humidity high in this area. You could also achieve this by using a small plastic box with a lid and cut a access hole in the tub in one side then join the tub to your existing enclosure or place the tub in your existing enclosure if it's big enough. To make this a humid area you'll need to add moisture so some damp sphagnum moss and you'll also need to add heat and you can do this by positioning close to the basking area. Next we'll talk about sphagnum moss. I've mentioned this a few times in this video and this is a special type of moss which is safe for tortoises and it's great at retaining water and therefore increasing humidity. This moss can be used in a hide as I've mentioned previously or it can be placed down one end of the table like this. Another alternative is the orchid or fir bark or cypress mulch. For this you can spread a thin layer on top of the soil substrate. I personally would only recommend this for older tortoises as when I've previously used this in setups some of my hatchlings tried to eat the bark and I was worried about impaction. However I know a number of tortoise keepers swear by this so I thought it was worth including with a word of caution. You can also use a thin cloth bag or a sock works just as well and then place a sponge or similar absorbent material inside the bag then you hang it on the side of the tub so there's less moisture on the floor plus it will prevent an inquisitive tortoise from trying to eat it. Another option is to pour a little water directly onto the substrate once a day into the corner of the tortoise table. What we're trying to achieve by doing this is when we scrape away the top layer of drier soil in the tortoise table it will reveal the damper substrate underneath. Don't be tempted to pour lots of water all over your entire tortoise table as if your tortoise is in contact constantly with damp soil it can cause health problems such as shell rot. Another option is to place saucers or bowls of water in your tortoise table. I use these on top of their hides like you can see here and are used in addition to their drinking water sources. These are best placed in the warmer areas of your tortoise's enclosure. Another option is to cover the substrate with dried leaves. I use beech leaves as I know these are tortoise safe. I personally would recommend avoiding oak leaves as from what I've researched they can be toxic to tortoises, especially the greener leaves and acorns. So to be safe I'd avoid using oak leaves completely. The dried leaves will help protect the soil underneath from drying out too quickly. You can still spray the leaves or soil daily and the leaves will obviously decompose over time but you simply add another handful of dried leaves when this happens. Another option is to use a closed chamber and this is where the complete tortoise table is enclosed. This option can be very effective in trapping heat and humidity but I personally wouldn't recommend it for beginners or those of you that have small tortoise tables without having strict monitoring in place. I will be covering building a closed chamber in one of my humidity videos very soon as I know a number of people have asked me for this. Rather than a fully closed chamber you can partially cover a tortoise table. For example the tub here has half of the top covered with lots of room for the heat to escape next to the basking bulb as well as trapping in as much humidity as possible in the covered area. Another example for you is this tub here. The middle section doesn't have any cover at all but at night I can cover the middle section like this to trap in humidity and heat as needed. There is still plenty of airflow even with the middle section covered. Please be careful if you are covering your tortoise table that what you are covering it with doesn't come into contact with the heating elements to avoid a fire risk. Now we move on to increasing humidity in your tortoise's outdoor enclosure. You can use similar ideas to the ones I've already been through for indoor enclosures and I'll briefly go through these now. So for the deep substrate, 
This is only relevant in an outdoor enclosure if it doesn't already have a soil substrate. Then you can consider adding a deep soil substrate in one area to allow your tortoise to dig down into the soil to get to the more humid area. Daily misting and also pouring water onto the substrate. Yes, you could do this by spraying the soil with sprinklers or pouring water directly onto the substrate, like we've discussed for the indoor enclosure, and this will help increase humidity. Humidifiers. I guess you could do this if you have the tube from the humidifier pointing into the outdoor enclosure, but it probably has little benefit unless it's pointing directly into an enclosed area. Adding plants. Yes, adding tortoise safe plants will definitely help if you keep these well watered. You could also create a separate humid area in the outdoor enclosure so that your tortoise can access it as it needs to. You'll need to add moisture and heat to make this a humid area. Adding heat in this case would be by positioning it in a sunny area. You could also add some sphagnum moss or the DIY cloth bag idea into your outdoor enclosure. But again, it would be more effective if it was put into a partially enclosed area. A thin layer of bark or leaves over the soil substrate will help retain the moisture in the soil and prevent the water from evaporating as quickly. Adding sources of water may also help increase humidity. Again, this will be more effective if they were placed in an enclosed or a partially enclosed area. You could also cover part of your outdoor area, for example, with the special plastic that allows UVB to filter through. This will help trap humidity in this area. You could also completely cover the outdoor enclosure, again with the special plastic that allows UVB to filter through. However, on very warm days, this could quickly become too warm for your tortoise, so you'll need to be on hand to either remove some or all of the plastic panels, or you could have a door to an area that is not covered, that has some shady areas for your tortoise to escape to to cool down. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, please click the thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and share with your tortoise friends. Thanks for watching!